Hello there, guys, and welcome back to Scum. Oh. Now, this isn't the standard Scum video. Um, recently, I've seen quite a lot of stuff going around. I'm not going to say hate, but quite a lot of videos regarding Scum and where it currently is in its process to becoming the full release. Which is just around the corner, apparently. Uh, we shall have to wait and see for that one. So, although I am nowhere near the biggest content creator who does scum videos, in fact, I'm probably one of the smallest, but I just thought I would give my two pence as well, because I love scum. I've said that always. It is an awesome game. The concept of the game... A bit like Hunger Games being dropped on this massive island with the elite watching you for their entertainment purposes and having Tech One with these puppets, these zombies, the undead, whatever you want to call them, reanim reanimated corpses, plus the sentries and the bunkers and all that kind of stuff. The concept is awesome. And I think the game in general... For me, was awesome all the way up to when they changed the puppet system. Now, I know everybody has been complaining about the puppet system. And just, you know, before I start and get deeper into this, I just want to say this is my personal opinion. You can agree with me. You can disagree with me. You can partially agree with me. You can think I'm a complete loon. Whatever. This is just my personal opinion. The biggest problem at the moment is the puppets. I think everybody knows that. They completely revamped the spawning system. In fact, they introduced a new spawning system, which they have confirmed it, they're not getting rid of it. They're keeping it. So for everybody saying, including myself, we should go back to how it was before in 0 0.8. Uh, that's not happening. Hopefully they will just work on this spawning system as you can see i've got show location on and you just saw them spawn in there around me bear in mind i'm playing on my settings which is times three puppets um obviously i've turned the damage off and all that kind of stuff with this but <clears throat> it's not on vanilla what i'm playing on i never play on vanilla because vanilla is too easy in my opinion but at the end of the day this is supposed to be a hardcore survival game. And the way I see it, there are two types of players for these kind of games. This game, DayZ, Rust, all those kind of games. There are PvP players and there are PvE players. I am a PvE player. Someone like me, I play solo, single player, and I'm in it for the survival aspect of it. The realism of being in that apocalyptic event. It's the end of the world. You know, everything's gone to shit. Can you survive? Get food, get water, protect yourself if you need to. <clears throat> Shelter, all that kind of stuff. That That's how I play. Oops, I missed these games. Then you have the PvP players who maybe play with a group of people they play together with their friends you know they get a group on a server they want to get the maximum amount of arsenal they can all the weapons all the ammo build the biggest base and just basically dominate the server and actively go out seeking to kill other players they don't care about the zombies they don't care about the mechs they don't care about the survival aspect they just want to go out collect everything they can on the server and kill people that, again, is my opinion. That's what I think. That's how that's how I separate the two kind of players for these kind of open world PvP, PvE games. At the, oh, let's see. That wasn't too bad, actually. I know there have been some fixes to the, to the puppet spawning. It has been a while since I've been on Scum, I will admit. I did have taken a break, and I've been playing DayZ um, just to try and get used to it, and, you know... I like playing Daisy. I like playing Daisy and I like playing Scum, but this isn't about Daisy. So, as I was saying, the biggest problem is the puppets that we all know that they just spawn in around you crazily. 
and it's just very difficult at the moment to move around with the puppets. But I also think, in my opinion, it is beginning to lack survival. You know, they're, they're in one of their dev updates the other day, they said uh, that they're putting the question out there about what else we can add to the base building. Now, as it stands for me, I think the base building is pretty cool. I think the modular base building system is awesome. I love it. What you can build, chop down trees, all that kind of stuff, like you would do, you know, building a tree house. It's, it's awesome. And I also think that the, the new hunting system is also really awesome. The fact that you actually have to track in on the animal, follow the footsteps, follow the, uh, the audio cues. That's also awesome for me. I think that's a really, really, really cool, awesome feature. But going back to the survival things, things like this. Uh, I can show you. Where is it? Things like this. Why, why, why do we need a dildo crossbow bolt? All right, it might be funny. You know, people making clips of smacking people over the head with this kind of stuff. But why? We don't need that. You know, I've never crafted one of those in this game ever. Because to me, it's pointless. Again, this is my opinion. But, you know, rather than adding something, because I, like I said, I think the base building is pretty awesome as it is. Rather than adding more stuff to something that is actually working, and is actually, you know, stable, as it were. Where is, let's see, boom, boom, they all just spawned in there. That's the problem. That is the problem. Where is the, the boiling the water before you can drink it? Where's that stuff? Where's, um, you know, the rest of the metabolism system? I know we've got the cuts and the infections and... and all that kind of stuff, but it still needs, it still needs ironing out because honestly, I should think 90% of players take no attention to this at all. Nobody gives a shit about this. No one. Because it's not engaging enough. It doesn't make you look at it, you know, and think, shit, my blood level is too low or my blood volume is wrong or blah, blah, blah. The only time people look at this is if they're in the snowy area and they start getting cold or they're in the southern area and they start getting hot. That's the only time people look at this. Me, certainly. I, I don't think anybody really cares about this shit. And, you know, as for the nutritional things with the food, the protein, the carbs, the fats, nobody cares about that either. You just eat what you eat to stay alive. I mean, yes, it's supposed to affect your metabolism and affect your weight and all that kind of stuff. And the fatter you get, the slower you run and all that jazz. But do people really pay attention to that? I don't think so. Again, that's my personal opinion. I've never seen, you know, videos online of the other content creators who are like, oh, no, I shouldn't eat the can of whatever it is uh sweets because that's unhealthy i should go and find some apples in a tree over there no they don't do that they just eat the can of sweets because <laughs> it's food and it's a survival situation and that's exactly what you would do in real life <laughs> if you found a can of sweets and you're starving you're going to eat it regardless of its nutritional value yeah so i think this metabolism system as good as it is i think it needs reworking you know that there is so much information here but nobody's looking at it at all really in my opinion um going back to the survival aspect of it things like boiling water before you drink it i can run over to the stream over there and drink straight from it which if you know your survival situations, some streams that is possible to do. Fast flowing streams that's got rocks underneath it that you can, you know, the, the water is constantly flowing. Yes, it is probably drinkable from. That's not to say that it's not going to have parasites in it. But something, you know, drinking from a stagnant pond 
yes, that's probably going to give you a rather nasty belly ache and probably the shit. That's really annoying. So, you know, they're the kind of things that are missing. And I understand people's frustration from from everything because to me scum is awesome i love scum i followed it from since the beginning admittedly i didn't start youtube you know recording it until what two years ago now because i thought it would be fun you know something to do follow along that was a shot follow along on my little adventure as we try and survive in the world of scum you know it's basically what has been growing my youtube channel ever since i started youtube um, but it does, it, it sort of, it has gone downhill a bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And I think everybody feels the same way, that it has gone downhill a little bit and there is room for improvement. And the devs are trying their best to do what they can, but this is where it gets tricky because... I have seen situations where um, other players of Scum have said some negative things, you know, basically just said this is what we want and this is what we would like, and the devs have not taken offense, that's the wrong word, but have basically just blocked their accounts, you know, when they follow them on on x or twitter or whatever the hell it's called these days and that is just childish in my eyes you know the fact that you know the devs have added oh yeah i can't really show you here because it's not here but the fact that they've added things like the content creators um unique items like rake it's beanie rake it's beanie for example or um uh, what's his face? The Scotsman's helmet. Fooster's machete. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. That, I think, is an awesome engagement between the devs and the community. And that, I should, that, I think, should continue. You know, because as a content creator, for the dev to reach to you and say, hey, we appreciate what you've been doing. We love the fact that you love our game, whatever it is. We want to show our appreciation by adding in an item that is personalized to you. So, for example, Rake It's Beanie with his logo and all that kind of stuff. That is such a big and special gesture for a dev to do that in a game. That really means that the devs appreciate what you're doing. And I think that's awesome. I really do. But on the flip side, to block them when they say something bad, that is just childish. <laughs> that is really just childish. You know, nobody likes criticism. There is not a single person on the planet who likes to be criticized when they've said something or, you know, when they've done something wrong. But nobody's done anything wrong here at all. Everybody's just giving their honest opinion about how they think the current status of the game is and what they think is happening in the future. So, you know, the questions should be, okay, we understand that the community is not happy. What do we do about it? We need to reach out to the community and we need to ask specifically, what do you want? What do you hate? What would you like to see? What would you delete tomorrow? Those kind of questions. That is a much more engaging response to the community and it gives the community the opportunity to voice themselves directly to the devs and say look this is awesome this is awesome this is awesome this is shit this is shit this is shit <coughs> excuse me please do something about this and i would love to see blah 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 you know but that it happens kind of because they the devs do kind of listen to the community in a way but at the same time they don't listen to the community uh, and I think that is the biggest problem, and I think that's why the player base is dropping off. Um, there is that whole video, uh, or that that rumor, I, don't, I guess, video going around 
where apparently there are some Chinese bots who are falsifying the data to make it look like more people are playing the game than it actually is. I haven't looked into it. I'm not interested in it. I don't give a shit about it, right? If that's what people are saying, fine. I honestly don't care about that at all. I'm, I couldn't give two flies. For me, like I said, it's the survival aspect. I'm a survival game -er. I want to be in a situation where I have to survive. Be it a zombie apocalypse, be it, you know, dinosaurs. Look, see, look at that. Look at all them zombies. Oh, that's the police station. Okay. That's the police station. Um, be it dinosaur island, whatever. You know, build, craft, eat, survive. That's That's what I want. And I think that's what a lot of people want who play these types of games. Like I said before, you're either a PvE or a PvP player. Now, they have obviously said that NPCs are coming, and I think for the PvE player, so for myself, that is a massive wow, because it gives us a bit more, mm, a bit more of a challenge, let's say. It gives us something more to fight against, um, something more to look forward to and have battles with rather than just the puppets. Uh, because, as you can see, they're quite easy to take out, let's face it. That they're not the hardest things in the world. That's why most people increase the settings to have more on the server, because, you know, they're pretty docile. And I have seen that... Okay, why did they get triggered? I have a silencer on. Whoops. See now why did they why did they get triggered? I had a suppressor on my weapon. The horde hasn't been triggered, but for some reason the entire village has. And this is this is a prime example of the problems that are currently ongoing. There's also the issue with, you know, arrows going through some of the puppets which I've also seen. I haven't had experienced that myself. But um yeah. See, I haven't triggered the horde, so what's going on here? What is this? I mean That shouldn't have happened because I had a suppressor on and every single other zombie that I took out up there, you know, when there was one on this side of the street and that side of the street, they didn't get triggered. But for some reason, now they have, and I don't know why. Anyway, talking about the Horde system, I actually really like the Horde system. I think it is a really, really good idea. But, again, it does need a bit of ironing out. Because it's not fully there yet. I know it's something new, and I hope they will iron it out in the future. And I... I look forward to the changes with the horde system that come because you know again for me like i've always said it's the little details it's the realism kind of stuff if it were a real true zombie apocalypse you would want to be as quiet as possible you would literally want to be the mouse you know you would have to be careful every single twig and 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 branch that you trod on or broken glass would trigger you know, they would hear that and then they would go and investigate. That's what we know of zombies from all the movies over the years. That's how they work. So. But yeah, let's see. It was raining all that time. And now only the rain sound has just come in. That I, I don't know what that's about. Maybe that's because I was shooting. But on the defense to the devs, because I feel like a lot of people have been attacking them lately. And I know I've said my worth. I think people forget that not only are they making a game, but for them it's also a business. It's their job. They have bills to pay, they have mouths to feed, you know, they have kids, they have all that kind of stuff. So they have um, shareholders to impress and get money from to put into the game. 
So as much as they want to do right by the community, they also have to look at it as a business as well. Because if the business fails, the game obviously will fail as well. You know? And, and I think that is one thing that a lot of people forget, is that all of these games, you know, COD, Battlefield, all of the massive AAA things, Rockstar, there, it, it's a business. There has to be money in it for them. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Because, you know, they spend X amount of money on research and development. They go live with it. Nobody buys it. That's a lot of money wasted, which means that the shareholders are not going to be happy. And then they're going to be reluctant in the future to give you more money for R&D. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that. A lot of people just go, we want this, we want this, we don't like this. Yeah, all right, fine. You know, there's lots of things in life that I want, but I can't have them yet. I can work towards them, but I can't have them yet. Either because I can't afford it, or I don't know how to do it, or whatever. You know, and I, and I think that's just one thing that I want to sort of defend the devs for a little bit, is that it is a business. They do have jobs to do. You know, all of this stuff takes time to model these buildings, to model these characters, to model the floor, have the weather system, do all of the coding. This takes time, this takes patience, this takes money, this takes energy, you know. And and that is the crux of it, really, is that it is a business for them. It's a game for us. We have a one-off payment and we have a game to play. They don't. They, they they have to get up, go to work, do everything to keep the game running smoothly because otherwise the game will fail, you know. And this isn't like, uh, what was that one that was a complete fucking rip-off? I can't remember the name of it now. The Days Before or whatever it was, which was hyped up and everybody spent money on the bloody... Um, um, I've forgotten the word. Everybody spent money on the pre-orders... The game was released, and then the very next day they said, yeah, we're shutting the business down. That that was literally just a con to get money out of everybody. That's all that was. That was just a con. This isn't. This game isn't. DayZ isn't. They're actively working. They're actively seeking to keep the game going. But in some respects, yes, they might be heading in the wrong direction. In my opinion... It's hard to say in, in what direction I think they're heading. For me, personally, I would like to see more survivalist stuff. I'm not bothered about the bunkers. I'm not bothered about the abandoned bunkers. I'm not bothered about the creatures in the abandoned bunkers, really. They're a cool feature. They're nice to interact with. But what I want is I want more survivalist stuff. And that's what this, you have to remember going back to the law, that's what this is. It's a survival game where the elite are watching us, like I said at the beginning, to see how long we can survive. And if you happen to run into another player, you have a PvP fight and blah, 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 blah. You know, and, and that is the direction that I think it should head in. And that is the direction that I hope it would head in. But, you know, again, there's nothing I can do about it. I just hope it goes that way. And I think a lot of people kind of need to, I'm not going to say stop complaining because, you know, obviously everybody has a voice and you want to say what you think and what you feel, which is fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I think people should just appreciate a little bit of how much hard work goes into this. And... Um, that they are working on it, but in the flip side to that, we just hope that they're listening to the community and they're not listening. I mean, obviously they have to listen to the business. I understand that. But they also have to listen to the community because the community is their business. Without the community, without the players, without the streamers, without the content creators, I don't think Scum would be where it is today. And I think... When it does go to 1.0, when the modders come in, 
and those guys can start having a little bit of fun and adding new vehicles, adding new locations, possibly even adding new maps like in DayZ and all that kind of stuff, then I think the game is just going to take off completely like a rocket because they will have the freedom to mod it. And modders in general do what the community want. I'm not saying that happens all the time, but, you know, normally there's like posts oh could a modder please do this blah 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 blah, and they might not get around to it straight away they might have other projects that they're working on but eventually they might turn around and say this is one that everybody's requested here you go <laughs> you know for example look at daisy and the expansion mod yeah the expansion mod completely changes the game it adds ai it adds the trader system it completely revamps the game uh, and it was a modder, you know, it's an add-on, basically. <laughs> a free mod that you can download from Steam. It's completely free. But the community appreciate that, and the community enjoy that. And I think once this gets to the modding stage, when it fully releases, then I think it will take off and just, you know, Zoom. skyrocket, and it will take off completely. Another thing... Again, this is my personal opinion, is the traders. As I've said in the past, whilst playing Scum and DayZ, the traders make it too easy. And I know that comes down to a little bit of self-discipline because you have to tell yourself not to go to the trader and just simply buy everything, which is what I'm trying to do in my DayZ series is I'm, I've said I'm not using the traders anymore because it's just too easy. It stops you from running around the map and looking for items. And, you know, that comes down to the apocalyptic scenario again is money. Money wouldn't exist, really. I mean, you would have some kind of trade, an apple for a pear, a pair of socks for a pair of gloves you know you would have a bartering system with the other communities in the survival scenario but i don't necessarily think you would have cash because it's worthless it wouldn't you know it would crash and it wouldn't there's no point in having cash under your bed you just use it to start fire oops so as much as i like the trading system and it is good I think that the, the trading system should go to your fame points only. I don't think we should have the cash and the gold bars and all that. That's a bit yeah. for me. You know, or you have an actual trader system where you trade items, like I said. So you want to buy, I don't know, a 911. An apple and a pear is not going to cut it for a 911. You've got to give me something bigger than that, dude. You know, I need gas. I need a battery. I need nuts and bolts. Whatever. And then you would have to go out, get those items, come back, trade. That would be an awesome, awesome trading trader. <laughs> because you're actually trading and bartering items not cash, which would be useless. Again, this is completely my personal opinion. Like I said, you can agree with me, you can disagree with me, you can think I'm a complete loon. <laughs> but this is just my personal opinion about the current state of Scum. Look, see, all those zombies have now disappeared. They've all gone. So, and for some reason the rain doesn't make rain sounds when I'm here. So let's see... What happens and when they will actually spawn in? Because currently, there's nobody here. But there were, you saw, I literally walked around the corner. <clears throat> and there was, what, five, six maybe in here? And now it's empty. There's no one here. And and I think this is the biggest gripe that people have is the, is the puppet spawning system, like I've said. 
Let's see, no one. Completely gone. So yeah, I don't know what's happened there. But anyway, I just wanted to sort of give my two pence worth because I, I do understand the frustration. Because again, it is an awesome game. I love Scum. I really do. But I do understand the frustration. Frustration. There we go. I can't speak. That people have currently about the game. But I also just wanted to sort of defend the devs a little bit as well. And not just, you know, say, oh, you're shit, you're shit, you're shit. Because they're not, really. Think about what they're doing to create this for us to play. You know, I certainly couldn't create a game. There's no way. No, I wouldn't even know where to begin. You know, no clue. So, and now they're all back again. Yeah, I don't get that. But yeah, I just wanted to sort of, like I said, give my two pence, say what I wanted to say, hopefully come back to Scum, maybe try it again, and, and just, you know, give my honest, real-world opinion. As I said, I am nowhere near the biggest content creator who does Scum, so what I say in terms of the devs hearing this probably is, you know, nothing, because I'm just not, I don't have that big a reach as other creators do, so, um, but I don't, I don't really care if they hear this or not, you know, like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I just, I just, I think there's been so much hate recently about Scum that I just wanted to come in and say, Yes, but also no, you know, and and that's hopefully that's what I said. So let me know if you agree with what I said, if you have different opinions, if you disagree with what I said, or if you think I'm complete balmy, then let me know what you think in the comments about where the current state of scum is with 0 0.95 and what you hope for the future of scum. And what will happen and where we will go which direction will we go will we go survivalist will we go pvp uh or will we go in a completely different direction entirely so yeah let me know in the comments below but that's where i'm gonna leave it had my little say and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like as a sheep subscribe if you're new ring that little bell so you get notified when my videos go live it's mainly Survival videos, as I said, Scum, DayZ. I'm waiting for a few other ones to come out, hopefully this year, so we can start some playlists on those as well. Playthroughs, not playlists, on those as well. And as always, guys, I'll catch you all in the next one.